All right, techies, this is episode 8 of the Java Discord Bot tutorial series, and today we're going to be going over uh, roles and permissions. This is just a quick tutorial just to uh, show off a couple things. So, on the Discord server, I have a couple roles. I have obviously the role for the tutorial bot that gets created for any bot that gets added. I have a staff role, and then default role will come a bit later. That's just like I've added in advance. Uh, you don't need to worry about that. But I've, the idea here is I've added a staff role, and this role is just to demonstrate actually giving a user a role. So if I go over here onto the onto, onto the main Discord server, you'll see we have um, my alt account and my main account and the tutorial bot. So currently, I do not have any roles. Uh, you see, I don't have either of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a command that adds the staff role. Obviously, you would never do this in a real bot. But this is just for demonstrations on how to add a role. I can think of anything better. So what we're going to do, I've just created a quick command. Uh, let's just set up without any options and just with the name and stuff. And so what we're going to do is firstly we need to actually get the person that has sent the message so we're going to get that in the member because event event dot get member and this is wrong hang on i have imported the wrong member uh so we're just going to import this and then what we're also going to need is a is the role. So I'm going to make a role variable equals event dot get guild. So we're going to get a role by doing get guild dot get role by ID, just like we did from I believe we got the guild by ID at one point. So what just like how we did there, we're going to want to make sure we have developer mode turned on, and then we can go over to roles and we can do here staff. We can right click and copy ID. Then we can just go back over to here and we can just paste it there. And I'm going to paste it as a long, so I'm just going to put an L there. And now we've got our member and our role. So now what we need to do is we can also do, in fact, what we might also want to do is have the guild. So I'm going to do it up here, guild, event get guild, and then this bit can be guild. So then what we can do is we can do guild dot uh, add role to member and this is going to take in the member and the role and then we need to also queue this and I'm just going to reply so I'm just going to do event dot reply with um, event with role added um, obviously you wouldn't be doing this normally with just a sim a, sim a single command to add a role normally you do this in another way but I'm just doing this to demonstrate how you actually do add a role to a player not a player, a member. So this command should have been registered and in, I've, I've made sure to register it in the main class. So now we can just start up the bot. We should be able to do slash, should be able to do slash staff. And if we do that, we should see that I get given the staff role. Oh. Now this happening is like actually that I do that we need to talk about is the hierarchy of roles. So just like any normal person in a normal on a in a Discord server, you c they can't add the role if they're not above it. So in any normal Discord server, you can't unless you're admin, you can't add a, some give someone a role that's higher than your highest role. So the tutorial bot, the highest role it has is tutorial bot. So if, and so this role needs to be above staff to actually give it to a member because it's because what well, it has to be above it so with it be because it was below it before it was through an exception but now if we put it above it we should be able to see that I can do slash I can do the slash command again and it goes role added and you see I get the I get the role so my name has gone green and I can remove it and it should have to do it again. So I've got no roll, slash staff, and that's all good. Um, obviously, this is a very bad, um, you wouldn't do this in, and uh, wouldn't make this command ever. This is just to demonstrate, again, it's just to demonstrate how to actually give someone a roll. So now, what if you want to check if someone has a roll? So 
Actually, no, let's do permissions first. What do you want to check if someone has a permission? Well, I've made a quick command here. It's, let's say you want to make your own custom ban command. So, obviously, you're going to want to make sure that whoever's running it has the permission to ban someone with the normal Discord ban anyway. So, so what we can do, I'm not going to actually give this ban functionality. We'll probably end up doing that next less, next episode. Uh, but what what, sh what we're going to do is we're just going to check to see if the member has the correct permission. If it does, we'll say that it's banning a player, and if it doesn't, we'll say that it can't get ex executed. So what we're going to do is, we're, again, we're just going to get the member. We're going to make sure we get it from the correct one this time. And we can just call this member equals event dot get member. And then what we can do is we can do if member dot has permission. And this is when we can do permission dot, and there's a whole lot we can we can do. So we've got ban members, we've got um, administrator, manage channel, view channel, basically all the permissions you can get from a role. Obviously we're going to do ban members, but you can use this for whatever. So if they have the permission, I'm just going to reply to the event with banning player. And then if they don't, oh, we need to queue that. Oh, dot queue. And then if they don't, we can, we can just have an else. If they don't, we can do event dot reply. You do not have required permission to execute. This command. We can queue that. So what should happen here is if we run the ban command, I'm going to do this on my alt just to uh, so because obviously my main has an ad has administrator. Okay, so I'm on my alt account, and so if I do slash ban without the staff role, you can see you do not have the required permission to execute this command. If I do slash staff. Then I can do slash ban again, and it does ban player. Now I also added a quick little other command called slash unstaff, which just removes the role. And then if I do slash ban now, we can see that it still works, and we didn't have the required permission. The way I did this unstaff was simply run doing a dot add role to member guild dot add role to member. I did guild dot remove role from from member. Pretty simple stuff. So that is how you do permissions. Now, obviously, for some things like, say, a mute command, there isn't actually a mute permission. Well, there sort of is, but that's for server muting in voice channels. If you want to have a mute command for text channels, we have to have it completely different. There's no inbuilt role, not role, permission. So we have to check if they have a role. So what we can do is we can do, uh, firstly, we're going to get the member again. So then to get member. And then we can just make that a variable. And then what we can do is we can do if event, actually, no, we need to get a role with the role first, sorry. So role, role equals, I'm just going to copy it from here because it's the same, guild.get role. Let's just copy the getting of the guild as well. So we need to get the guild and we also need to get the role. So now we can do if member.get roles.contains and then role. So this is if they have the role, then we can just do, again, I'm not going to make this mute command actually work. I'm just showing you how to actually like check for roles. We can do event dot uh, reply with uh, muting user. And then we can do else event dot reply. You do not have permission to execute execute this command so hopefully now what should happen is if we do have the role it would work and if we don't it will not work so let's test that okay so i'm here i have the staff role if i do slash mute we'll see it says muting user if i do slash unstaff so move the staff role then i do slash mute it should say I do have permission to execute this command. So this is all working perfectly. So obviously you wouldn't necessarily you wouldn't use these in this exact context, but this just shows you how to work a bit more with check permissions and also checking for roles and giving roles and removing roles and stuff like that. But anyway, that is pretty much all we're gonna do in this episode. So hopefully I'll catch you in the next one.